who actually debated or not, or whether we should actually do a video on the Mustang GTD, as it's not really aimed at the normal everyday Mustang enthusiast, but there's a lot of questions about this car and why Ford actually built it. Now, about a week or so ago, some pictures of the Mustang GTD were basically leaked on the internet, and people saw it and went crazy, and there were posts and videos about what this car is. It's the mid-engine Mustang, it's a 5.5 liter Stroker EcoBoost, all kinds of just wild speculations based off a couple pictures. Well, thankfully, a few hours later, Ford actually had the official debut of the Mustang GTD and explained what it is and what it's capable of, and it's a pretty impressive car. So what is the Mustang GTD? Well, cars like the GT350, the GT500s, they were high performance variants designed to be affordable by a lot of consumers. The GTD is completely different. This was a blank check car. Jim Farley, CEO of Ford, basically pulled some engineers back in 2021, stuck them in a warehouse far back in a corner and said, build the ultimate Mustang. You know, no expense spared, build the ultimate Mustang to compete with the high-end European supercars. Now around this time, Ford is working on the GT3 program, which can bring the Ford Mustang back to international racing, in particular Le Mans. They work with Multimatic to bring out the Mustang GT3, which debuted back in June, while the Mustang GTD is going to be the street-going version of the GT3. So think race car for the street. So the Mustang GTDs are going to be built mostly by hand at Multimatic Motorsports. So think more Ford GT than actual Mustang GT. So under the hood is going to be a dry sump version of the Predator engine, the supercharged 5.2 found in the GT500. Now Ford doesn't give us exact horsepower yet, but they're saying at least 800 horsepower. Now knowing the GT500 engine, at least 800 horsepower will not be a problem for that engine. So you get 800 horsepower up front, then you're going through a lightweight carbon fiber drive shaft to an eight speed DCT transaction. So you have the DCT transmission, same style as the GT500, but now in an eight speed, and a transaxle. So why a transaxle instead of a transmission? The main reason, weight distribution. The transaxle puts all that weight now at the back of the car. What that means is a 50-50 weight balance between front and rear, which is perfect for a high performance track car. The dampers were custom designed by Multimatic using their DSSV, which is Dynamic Suspension Spool Valve. I won't get crazy technical, but spool valves are basically small cylindrical springs within the dampers that allow for incredible control over rebound and compression. There's gonna be two in each one. So again, it gives it incredible control, but it also makes it incredibly consistent. That suspension is gonna do the exact same thing every time you take it out on the track. It's also a coilover setup with a dual spring. You have a high rate spring on the top and a lower rate spring on the bottom. What that does is allow for much more comfortable riding when driving this car on the street. Now moving to the rear suspension, the rear suspension is a work of art. It's an inboard suspension. It is a push rod style suspension using those Multimatic DSSVs with the same style spring rate and basically it takes up the entire trunk as everything is mounted above the transaxle. Again, this kind of setup gives you incredible control over what the suspension is actually doing and bumps the Mustang to supercar levels. The suspension is also semi-active, which again is the first for a Mustang as well. What that means is there's a hydraulic system that will raise and lower the car. So when you want to go on the track and you put it in track mode, it lowers the car about an inch and a half. So basically those comfort springs at the bottom completely compress, and now you're just using those higher rate track springs. Again, this is something Mustang has never seen before. Now let's talk about the body. And a lot of people have talked about the body of this car where there's too many scoops, there's too many of this, there's too many of that. The body of this car is functional. Now you're talking about almost all carbon fiber, fender, hood, bumpers, all made out of carbon fiber, again, to keep the weight down. Now your door is gonna be aluminum, but you also have active aero on this car. There are actually hydraulic shutters that raise and lower the front of the car, and that huge chassis mount rear wing is also fully adjustable. So why it might look like a boy racer body kit, well, this one is completely functional and serves a purpose. And of course, a few other parts of the car that definitely speak race car, you have the exhaust, it's titanium to keep the weight down, and also fully active. Wheels, 20 inches made of magnesium, 325 millimeter tires up front and 345s in the back. Again, the largest ever fitted to a Mustang. And of course you have massive Brembo brakes with carbon ceramic rotors. Again, hardcore stuff that's from the race car world that is now part of a Mustang street car. 
Now the interior of the Mustang GTD is one thing that has not been discussed too much. We know it's gonna have Recaro seats. We know it's gonna have a very, very business-like feel, but it will be comfortable as well. The steering wheel is gonna have a lot of control. Obviously, you're gonna have the titanium paddle shifters, but you're also gonna have controllers for the adjustable traction control. This car is gonna have traction control that you can adjust as you go right off the steering wheel. Again, more race car stuff that has trickled down to a street car. So at the end of the day, what does all this cost? Well, that's the one thing a lot of Mustang enthusiasts have gone crazy over. The price starting at $300,000. That's correct. This is a $300,000 Mustang. But it's not like any Mustang that Ford has ever built in the past. Now with this car, it's gonna have the same kind of program as the Ford GT, which means if you want one, you're gonna have to apply to purchase one and there will be a contract with Ford. Now, owners of the Ford GT were basically told they got the car for a sticker, but they couldn't sell it for so many years. There was all kinds of stipulations. Expect the Mustang GTD to be the same way. So what are my personal thoughts on the Mustang GTD? Well, if you read the internet, the Mustang community is, as usual, completely divided. A lot of people 100% behind it, respect the car, respect the build, respect what Ford's doing, and love it. The other half, not so much. They think it's ugly. They're going to keep their GT500. They'd rather have a 350R. They'd rather this. But I think a lot of people don't understand what this car really is. This is this is not a Mustang. I mean, just like the Mach-E used the Mustang name, but it was a completely different vehicle, the GTD is kind of the same thing. You've got Mustang name and Mustang styling. That's kind of where it ends. Everything else about this car is pretty much supercar. Yeah, I know it uses the same engine as the GT500, but it's modified, it has a dry sump, the suspension, next level, the brakes, everything about this car takes it up a notch and they're, they are really aimed hardcore at that European supercar market. Now I get it, it's a $300,000 car and it, even worse maybe, a $300,000 Mustang. But their goal with this car is a sub seven minute trip around the Nürburgring. Cars that can do that, you know, your AMG GT Black, the Lamborghini Huracan, the Lamborghini Aventador SVJ, 911 GT2, GT3 RSs, all those cars are in that same price point that perform at that level. If the Mustang can actually perform at that level or maybe faster than some of those cars, does it justify the price? If you can get past the fact that it says Mustang and realize what this car really is, I think it kind of does. Now, will I ever own one? Absolutely not. I'd never be able to afford a car at that price point. If I had the means, would I want one? Yeah, I think I would. I mean, that engine with a car that's gonna be hundreds and hundreds of pounds lighter than any S550 or S650 GT, with that kind of power, track capable suspension and brakes, this car is gonna be an absolute monster. So while the competition is either non-existent or went with electric cars, Ford said, hold my beer and went out and built the absolute fastest and best performing Mustang we are ever going to see. To me, that's a huge win for Ford and a huge win for the Mustang.